Good morning, everybody. It is really great to be here with so many people and organisations who've worked so hard on this agenda uh, for such a long time. Um, I'm really delighted to be here to share with you uh, our emerging vision for cycling in London uh, and uh, to say to you that Sadiq uh, has the view that he has a very strong mandate uh, to deliver on uh, our uh, on a cycling uh, agenda. Um, we do need uh, a new approach to improving uh, providing transport that meets the needs of Londoners today. And actually, uh, the agenda isn't just about movement. We do want to build a fairer city where everybody has got the same life chances. Um, because we've got so many Londoners struggling to get by on a low wage, and that's why we are uh, keen to be committed to the freezing of the TfL fares. Um, and we are all concerned about air quality and how it impacts on our health. Um, it's not fair that the most disadvantaged people in our community are disproportionately affected by uh, air pollution in London. And we are uh, taking some bold steps and we've done our first stage consultation on the uh, ULES and the T-charge and the proposals we have to try and clean up the air in London uh, faster. Um, many Londoners, as we've said, want to cycle but don't feel that it's safe enough. Um, Londoners also uh, walk a lot and we'd like them to walk more and here I am wearing my Fitbit. Um, but the quality of their experience is often uh, very poor. Um, Many Londoners are not active enough and they're, they're, we are overweight, as I said, um, and struggle to fit healthy additional activity uh, into their daily lives. And it should be part of our core mission to help them do that. So our vision is to make London uh, a healthier, safer and more attractive place to cycle. Uh, we want all streets to be inviting uh, for people to enjoy, to enjoy walking, to enjoy cycling, and of course, to use uh, public transport, which very often goes with uh, other forms of active travel. The benefits of that active travel are absolutely uh, huge. It does improve health and well-being. It will improve our air quality, and actually it reduces congestion. We know we've got a city where we are, uh, we are rationed for road space, particularly in the centre, and uh, cycling and walking are incredibly efficient modes of transport. We need to broaden our ambition uh, to, look, to look not just how uh, key routes work for cyclists, but how London's streets and transport systems operate for people generally. Streets make up 80% uh, of our uh, public spaces in London, and they are where most of our transport takes place. And cyclists and pedestrians usually need the same things. Uh, Well-designed streets, clean air that aren't dominated by motor traffic. We need uh, very often to reduce traffic speeds and have good safety features in place. So we need to shift from creating streets that only work for motorised traffic towards creating streets that work for people. And we need to look again uh, at reinvigorating our drive to mode shift. It's been absolutely fantastic to sit in the mayor's office with Sadiq Khan and hear him say, how can we progress modal shift? How can we get people um, into active transport, uh, walking, cycling and public transport? Um, closer coordination of all these areas of transport policy will be required. This will include not just our attention to walking and cycling schemes, um, but also as part of that, uh, a focus on road safety, focus on accessibility, uh, a focus on how we can reduce private car use, um, managing freight better, and focusing on improving our air quality. And I think the result could be a sea change for cyclists and pedestrians, a new approach to the public realm that creates 
healthy streets, a methodology you will be uh, familiar with, I think, as professionals. Healthy streets that are safe, have clean air, and are appealing to all uh, Londoners. So, um, back to cycling. The Mayor's aim is to make London a byword for cycling. Uh, in pursuit of this aim, we have pledged to increase the proportion of uh, Transport for London's budget spent on cycling, and we're just arm wrestling our five-year business plan for our publication in November. So you will see very soon uh, what we are planning to do there. Uh, to continue the Cycle Superhighway programme, Personally, I'm not too keen on the word super in there, but definitely uh, a cycle superhighway programme uh, with focus on segregated provision. I'm sure you've seen um, on Friday we announced our uh, commitment to proceed uh, with the North-South Cycling Superhighway Phase 2. Uh, and uh, I'm de delighted to say this morning, to announce this morning, uh, we published the results for Cycling Superhighway CS11, um, which the Mayor has said he wants to see uh, built. There are some issues we want to do further work on with the route, but in total, Cycling Superhighway 11 looks like a really good uh, programme and we want to proceed with it. Um, but of course, with some uh, improvements. We want to support the delivery of more quiet ways and very crucially, safer junctions. Um, and we want to promote safer, cleaner lorries. Uh, there's a key commitment on that. And TfL is actually working now on a, a world first uh, direct vision standard, um, which I hope we can go into more detail on uh, later in this year. Uh, we want to deliver more cycle storage and parking using the next London plan and crucially working with the boroughs, with the councils uh, to deliver on-street uh, cycle parking. Um, and the boroughs are really important partners in all of this. As you know, they, they own 95% of our road network in London um, and they are absolutely uh, our key partners in delivering so much of this. So, uh, why are we keen to focus on cycling? I think I said the arguments in favour of cycling are very obvious. Uh, London's population is growing by uh, two busloads of people every day. And cycling is very efficient, a very efficient use of our limited road space. It offers excellent value for money uh, for people. And um, cycling is not just about movement, it's also about reducing our harmful traffic emissions, improving the public space that we live and walk around in, improving our health, supporting businesses as, bu as cycling attracts business growth and improves productivity. It's good for local communities and uh, local businesses. Um, cycling is actually already moving a staggering number of people around. In 2014, there were six, this is very precise, I don't know exactly who stood and counted them, but um, the, uh, we do do counting, uh, 645,000 daily cycling trips, uh, which is equal to about 20% of uh, tube trips. Um, some early data from the newly opened superhighways illustrates quite how efficient cycling can be. Uh, the Victoria Embankment, which was uh, CS3, and uh, Blackfriars Road CS6 corridors are now moving 18% more people per hour than they did before the cycle tracks were built. You just get more people through. Um, and at the busiest times, cyclists make up 70% of all traffic on Blackfriars Bridge. Do you remember the campaign when they were going to reduce the amount of cycling available on Blackfriars Bridge? Well, you know, the campaign was successful. Blackfriars Bridge is, I think, pretty cycling friendly and cyclists are using it, which is absolutely wonderful. And these are very early uh, figures. Uh, cycling numbers uh, are likely... I think to be growing anyway and to make the case for cycling infrastructure even uh, stronger. Um, we do recognise that there's been a great deal of uh, uh, progress that's already uh, been made in London uh, for cycling by the previous uh, two mayors. 
Um, 30 kilometres of cycling superhighways have been built, uh, with recent routes built to, I would say, an improving standard. There's been a lot of learning, um, which we intend also to do. Uh, seven quiet ways routes are, are due for completion in 2017. Uh, Q1 opened in June and it is already showing up a 40% increase in cycling activity. Uh, the Safer Lorries scheme launched in 2015 and we're looking, as I said, at how we can strengthen that and move forward. Um, the number of cyclists killed or seriously injured reduced in London in 2015. Um, the KSI, the killed and seriously injured data, is 387. It fell by 10% um, uh, from 2014 when there were 432, um, bringing the cycling casualty rate down uh, to the lowest ever record. Um, but this is still way too many. We know that. Um, but we have to recognise uh, uh, the fact that we've got a lot of work to do. So to get people cycling more safely, we do need to do a lot more. And we are looking now in detail at what has worked and what hasn't worked. And we are writing and talking to the boroughs about that as well. Um, the lessons we are learning. Uh, the Mayor will direct TfL to work with utility companies to coordinate maintenance and upgrading of infrastructure in order to ensure uh, to, that the same sections of road are not repeatedly subject uh, to works. We do actually have to manage the infrastructure in, uh, in, the, in the most efficient way. And works will be phased more carefully uh, so that we're not building multiple major projects on adjacent streets uh, and we're looking at more evening and night work. I don't want to beat up the, the, the last mayor uh, for the work that went on to get the infrastructure in, but towards the end of his administration there was a lot happening at the same time and uh, you know um, we, we don't want cycling infrastructure projects to be given a bad press. We want them actually to be phased in in a, in a good and sensible way, but, but purposefully. Um, we will consider um, buses when we're planning more routes and make sure that they're not disproportionately affected during construction. And actually also it means, I think, that we can look at um, putting things like bus priority schemes further back down a bus route. So if there is a time loss for the bus routes, actually, we can replace that time elsewhere uh, along the route. So looking in a more holistic way at installing these schemes. We will uh, engage more and more effectively with local communities to try and secure more public support for uh, the schemes. I think some of the particular projects have taken longer because uh, towards the end of the schemes, there's been, had to be rounds of redesign and more consultation. Actually, it would be better, I think, to put that in at the beginning and get uh, local communities much more signed up and the detail work done. I totally understand when communities are concerned about the possibilities, the dangers of traffic displacement. We need to think about that early on. And I think we need to go out with an agenda that says, um, this is not for just the cyclist, this is for all of us, you as potential cyclists, you as pedestrians, um, the street you live in, uh, an agenda that um, embraces all of our aspirations for an improved uh, environment. So we want to make sure uh, a cycling investment programme also works for pedestrians. And I think you can see the uh, effects uh, of when that thinking happens. If you look at how uh, the pedestrian crossings that were put into Parliament Square as part of CS3 has actually opened up and transformed the feel of the square uh, for pedestrians. There's actually many more tourists enjoying the square. Um, it really has been good. So, you know, we're making the environment better for everybody. Um, so what might uh, healthy streets mean uh, for cycling? I just wanted to show you a few examples of what this new approach can achieve. Uh, this is a fantastic example of what a healthy street could look like from uh, uh, Boulogne, uh, Boulogne, Boulogne, France, um, cycling through meadows. Um, it's, I really like the idea of uh, segregated cycling through trees and more planting. Sadiq's got a big commitment to greening London and more trees. The only thing that's wrong with this photo is there isn't a cyclist in it. I think, <laughs> come on, guys, get down there, and gals. Um, 
uh, another example of a, of a aha, we have a cyclist, of a healthy street uh, with space for cyclists and pedestrians um, in, in Berlin. Uh, very nice. And something uh, a little closer to home, looks English, doesn't it? Uh, a transformative scheme for people, not just for cyclists in uh, Waltham Forest, part of their uh, mini uh, Holland programme. So, uh, we will deliver uh, healthy streets for London by uh, carrying on with the next phase of the cycle superhighway routes. I've got a big map of the whole stuff on my office wall and, you know, we're working out what we can do when. Um, we will announce progress. Um, we announced the progress on the north-south uh, phase two last week and today our intention to progress with Cycle Superhighway 11. Uh, similarly, the Mayor wants to see the changes made at uh, the Hammersmith Gyratory, the Hammersmith Broad Broadway, which is, I think, part of the Better Junctions programme that will link CS9. Uh, we want to see progress on that. Um, superhighways and quietways, um, all of the future schemes, we will make sure we design them so there's clear benefits for cyclists and pedestrians. And um, we want to develop a new approach to town centre projects, uh, delivering safer and more attractive places to walk and cycle, transforming our town centres. And anybody who's ever had a role in a local council, local community, even a local business organisation, will tell you it's very critical uh, to the economic success uh, of a local community, uh, a town centre in London, that actually this is a good place to live and that we make it a better place to live. Um, we will be reviewing uh, and continuing to transform the busiest junctions in London. And I'm keen to ensure that any future projects deliver safety benefits to all our vulnerable users, road users, including cyclists, um, and the Better Junctions programme will integrate walking and cycling. On road safety, I'm really keen that we look at what, um, if you're familiar with the terminology, a vision zero approach might look for London. If you look at the work that's gone on in New York and Stockholm, actually, um, we should not be tolerating so many road deaths. We should be aiming to make uh, London safe uh, for uh, all our vulnerable road users. What would that look like for London? I think that would be a fantastic objective uh, to set ourselves. Um, and you'll see that there are increasingly there will be projects to pedestrianise. Um, and of course, one of the key projects that, that Sadiq has put as one of, one of his big ambitions is to um, move ahead with pedestrianisation in Oxford Street, working in partnership with Westminster Council um, and again delivering a good and general environment for the local community, making sure we take traffic out um, rather than just simply displace it. We do need to remove traffic to make Oxford Street work. Um, and of course that's kind of pressing on us now because when Crossrail 1 opens in uh, the central section in 2018, there'll be hundreds of thousands more people coming into central London. We want them to have a great environment uh, to, to walk around in. Um, I guess if you ask me to characterise uh, what I feel our mission now is on cycling uh, and to some extent walking, it's, uh, it is actually to keep up the momentum and I think it's to move the program uh, of cycling development from a sort of uh, embattled flagship policy early years into mainstream core uh, business. It's core activity for us to make London a great place uh, to cycle, a great place to walk, a great place to live. So thank you very much indeed.